Hello, we are yet to start the session. This is just the slides which are showcasing. We will start by 10 10. So please wait. Okay, so let's start with the session. Hello and good morning to all. Myself Chaitali, your host for today's session, uh, prep session on DP203 certification. So let's start with the introduction about this session. Before that, let's have a small introduction about our today's event sponsor, Synergetics. Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company which help any industry to get their relevant technological solutions and helps to be on the top of the competition. We are not only restricted to the group trainings, but also our Microsoft certification trainings helps every individual professional to succeed in this competitive world. Here are some of the master solution offered by Synergetics, onboarding, reskilling, certification, certification plus add-on cloud adoption 
architecting practice playbook latest technology tra training and emerging technology training today's uh, session is organized by atc community and sponsored by synergetics and microsoft our atc community is open to all the people who are interested in microsoft cloud technologies you just need to follow our meetup groups which are emerging technology community for all azure tech community pune for pune kars azure tech community nagpur for nagpur kars azure tech community gujarat for gujarati tech and ai or microsoft platform community for ai groups you just need to install the meetup app on your phone and follow our communities so you will get the updates regarding our upcoming events meetups webinars and workshops small code of conduct which you all need to follow please note that you cannot take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording if you need the recording then simply subscribe to our youtube channel we will drop the youtube channel link for you all in the chat box here you can see the session flow for today's session go ahead yeah next slide yeah so the timings are mentioned uh, the first break time will be at 11:30 then we will be having lunch break for 1 hour and we will move ahead and will continue the q and a by the end of the uh, session which is by 4 then the agenda for the session before that let's have a introduction about today's e, uh, speaker mr chandrashekar deshpande chandrashekar sir is working in tech corporate industry for more than 30 years his core experience is in data related technologies he is microsoft certified trainer and have delivered great knowledge on tech, today's highly demanded technologies like big data analytics machine learning azure and hadoop agenda for the session in this session participants will get to learn and explore compute storage options for data engineering workload in azure and more now special announcement we are providing free moc microsoft official courseware for dp203 on your register mail id for your understanding moc is an important study material for your exam preparation so if you want to claim free dp203 moc that is microsoft official courseware do fill out the moc activation form link will be provided in the chat box i repeat if you want to claim the dp203 moc do fill out the moc activation form the link will be provided in the chat box also we are providing exam voucher on discounted rate for dp203 that is for 3100 only for your for further information interested participants can drop us mail on info@synergetics-india.com the email id will be provided in the chat box now we can grow professionally by adding the latest technology skill with microsoft various certification you can enroll for any of these training programs with synergetics where you will experience live interactive session with the best industry mcts trust us and will deliver the best go ahead with the slide hello vijayalakshmi your screen is not moving i guess hello now yeah yeah no not yet maybe network issues there yeah yeah yes. fine 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 go ahead wait a minute mm -hmm. now you can see my screen yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it is visible 
go on to the upcoming certification session wala slide you can screen see in my screen yeah yeah bus bus that's that's fine okay okay so upcoming certification session is on uh, pl 300 that is on 17th of september a uh, full day session it will be the link for the registration will be provided to you in the chat box so you can register through that follow us on our social media platforms and pages so you will get updated relate, related to the upcoming sessions and webinars so i will hand over the mic to chandrasekhar sir now so he can proceed ahead with the session thank you thanks to all the links to all of the uh, pages and link to youtube channel will be provided to you in the chat box so you can go through that thank you thanks to all uh, thanks chetali thanks vijay lakshmi and i welcome all of you for this uh, uh, six hour session on dp 203 certification it's a preparation for this certification <coughs> as a uh, chetali already introduced me uh, yes samul i got your message all necessary links and uh, uh, inputs i will provide in these hours for youtube recording uh, subscription huh. yes yes okay uh, i hope uh, i am reaching to everybody yes sir, you are audible yeah uh, i am sharing my screen also would like to know whether uh, screen also is reaching to you let me know when it reaches to you yes yes we can see that okay so dp203 examination is based on uh, two main tools one is azure uh, synapse analytics and another is azure databricks there are other supportive tools also on which also you know questions are asked in the examination other supportive tools are like uh, blob storage data lake store uh, stream analytics cosmos db here i am assuming that everybody who is attending this session you know everybody knows uh, foundation uh, everybody has a foundation and knowledge of azure and they might have gone through the curriculum of az 900 and is uh, dp 900 because both these are you know fundamental uh, certifications uh, it is not essential for you to complete these examinations appear to these examinations to uh, go for dp 200 uh, 203 but yes knowledge of those certifications are really a foundation and knowledge for this certification <clears throat> yeah first of all i would like to uh, explain you the examination pattern so that whenever we will study uh, the curriculum you know at the back of the mind all the time examination pattern should always be in your mind okay so that um, you know you can look at the theory look at the subject through that angle that in what way in examination they may ask you the questions okay overall curriculum has been divided into four modules so module 1 module 2 module 3 and module 4 out of these module 1 has you know maximum weightage of around 40 to 45% and module 1 covers uh, uh basics of uh, synapse analytics as well as other tools supporting tools so how do we identify which kind of storage to use in what scenario what are all different partitioning strategies okay different uh, serving layer in the module 2 we will focus more on serving layer but overview of serving layer to be uh, taken in the module 1 then uh, uh, logical data structures okay physical data structure so all these are main points of the module 1 and if you complete module 1 in uh, with respect to the curriculum you know you complete around 
40 to 45 percent uh, uh, for the examination. Second module talks, uh, talks about transforming uh, data, specifically in batch processing data pipeline and stream processing data pipeline. So what do you mean by batch processing data pipeline, stream processing data pipeline? How do you use uh, these uh, pipelines uh, or how do you use these concepts uh, in Synapse? What are all support from the Synapse side for designing both types of these uh, pipelines? So just to see, this is the second uh, highest uh, module uh, uh, with respect to the uh, weightage in the examination, designing and development data processing. So if I um, assume it's a coverage, uh, sorry, it's a weightage is 25%. So module one, 45% and uh, module two, 25%. So it is around 70% still. It is not sufficient, you know, to cross the uh, mark of 700 or 70 percent for the examination. Design and implement uh, data security that is around 10 to 15 percent and monitor and optimize data store and data processing that is also around 10 to 15 percent. So one of these two models you can choose. I will always vouch for you know uh, preparing on all four modules, but in case if you are running uh, short of time, one of these two models you can choose and there again I will uh, prefer you to go with a model four because uh, you know it is a much simpler compared to uh, uh, module three. So at least three models you should complete, but if you complete model four, you know it makes uh, uh, more probability for uh, you to go through the examination successfully. OK. How examination is uh, conducted? Only one examination and it is also MCQ based examination. There is no theoretical examination or descriptive examination as well as there is no practical examination. Only one examination where you may be asked around 42 to 58 MCQs. Multi choice questions or single choice questions. OK, uh, so how do you identify whether question is single choice or multi choice? So you will have to carefully identify whether there is a radio button or a checkbox. If it is a checkbox, it is a multi choice question. OK, how many choice you have to check there? That again is given always in the problem statement. The problem statement is, uh, you know, uh, giving all the details. No, select two choices, select three choices. That kind of figure is always mentioned there. And whenever they do not mention any such figure, assume that you have to go through all the choices and maybe you have to order them. You don't have to select them. You have to order them in uh, proper sequence. So in case if they are giving you five choices, all the choices are correct. You simply have to order them. Multi-choice question certainly carries multifold weightage. No negative marking. No negative marking. It means try to attempt each and every question. Don't leave any question unattempted. Attempt every question. Okay, total passing score is 700 out of 1000. So it is around 70%. Remember, 1000 means every question may have multiple weightage. Total exam duration, total exam duration is of 150 minutes, including joining 15 minutes early uh, for the examination and staying there uh, 15 minutes after you conclude, after you submit or finally submit the examination. So total 150 minutes, but actual examination time is 120 minutes. There will be around 42 to 58 MCQs. When I appeared for this examination, I appeared for this examination second time recently from uh, last month. When I appeared for this exemption, I got around 44 uh, MCQs. OK, but every time everybody will get a different question set with a different number of questions there. I appeared it again just to ensure, uh, just to know 
new pattern because I came to know that they have changed the pattern just to know new pattern. What is this new pattern that also I will discuss? A case study is given and around five to eight questions are asked on it. In earlier pattern, examination used to begin with a case study. And there were five to ten questions asked on that case study. But in the new pattern, this case study is being asked at last. So there were 34 questions given to me. Uh, 34, no, sorry. Uh, 40 questions were given to me. 40 questions at the beginning. And last four questions were based on the case study. So case study was given to me. And there were four questions asked, which were based on that case study. Case study runs a couple of uh, more pages. Okay, and there are hyperlinks given to the left side. Okay, from where you can select to which page you want to go. Okay, and it is very much possible that you read the question, decide or understand what exactly uh, they are expecting in the question. Search the answer of that question in the case study and give the answer to. So parallelly, you know, say uh, synchronously, you can refer to the pages and you can uh, no, submit the questions. That is possible. OK, so that's how uh, examination uh, uh, is given or uh, uh, that's how the pattern of the examination is. OK, well, a couple of more things I would like to put here and that is. There are three types of questions in the examination. Three types of questions. I would have mentioned that point also. You just let me check. Have I mentioned it somewhere? No. There are three types of questions in the examination. One type of question is based on the case study. Let me okay, just mention here. Three types of questions. Okay, exam begins with individual questions where problem statement is given and immediately have to answer it. NDV questions. OK. There are questions where one larger problem statement is given. OK, and. Yes or no like answer is asked. Whether this is the problem statement that they are expecting uh, improvement in the performance in uh, in the working of some tool and they will suggest you solution. Whether this solution will work, yes or no. OK, that type of question it is. So the solution can be, uh, you know, whether this measure is taken, it will it increase the performance, yes or no. Whether that measure is, OK, immediately next question will be having the same problem statement, but another solution given. Another solution given. OK, now in these questions, very important point. I saw around six such questions. OK. Exam begins with individual questions. There are few questions on a small problem statement. OK, on which solution is given and you are expected to. OK, the solution. Agree to. Disagree. To the solution. Agree or disagree. The solution. And third type of question obviously is. Uh, on the case study. Third type of question is on the case study. OK, so that's how you know examination has been. Uh, design. Earlier the examination was really tough. It was of three hours. With around 65 to 70 questions, but now they have simplified the examination. They have simplified many things. They have simplified curriculum also. Earlier MOC was very large. It was of around 1200 pages. The study material was very large. But now it has been to 650 pages. 
around 650 pages. So, uh, so study material they have, you know, made precise. Okay, labs they have made precise, as well as examination duration they reduced. Okay, and the scope was much unlimited earlier, but now they have limited the scope also. So many good uh, measures they have taken and they have made this examination, you know, simple compared to earlier. OK, it's a good opportunity for you to, uh, you know, appear for the examination, earn and win the certification before, you know, they change their mind. OK, so that is about examination pattern. You can select examination location even at home. I appeared uh, for this examination okay, in the midnight so that, uh, you know, uh, my family members, I should not face any kind of uh, 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 say disturbance from anybody. Okay, so I appeared it even in the midnight so I can select, uh, you know, uh, time slot as per my choice. Must have a room completely isolated while examination is going on. You don't have to you know, mandatorily go to pro, uh, pro matrix center to appear for the examination. OK, and yes, in if you try to book a slot in pro matrix center, you give, get very few choices. But if you try to appear for the examination from the home, you get lots of time slots, time slots. OK, must maintain complete decorum of examination without anybody around. You must not have anybody around. OK, no second laptop around. Mobile phone must always must be away at arm's distance. Remember, for this examination, your video and audio must be on during the total duration of the examination. Somebody is always monitoring you, your eyeball movements, your lip movements, any audio or any voice around you, any movements around you, everything somebody is all the time monitoring. OK, and in case if they feel any suspicion, OK, they immediately ask you to turn your laptop around and show them in a complete room ambience. OK, so it did happen for me also that they did ask me to show complete ambience. OK, so uh, don't be in impression that in case if you are appearing for this examination at home, you know, you may get some real leverage. No, you don't get any leverage at all. You even cannot have, uh, you know, notepad also besides you. You can have one, uh, say, blank page, but notepad and any other thing you must not have. Okay, audio and video must be on as a proctors, one from India and another from uh, remote, continuously monitoring you all the time. Laptop must be used for examination, must pass all. Hardware test well before examination. Well, before examination, you have to join uh, the link. Uh, uh, maybe 30 minutes uh, in advance. OK, uh, so whenever you join there uh, 30 minutes in advance, you know, uh, they may ask you to for the verification. So you you have to install one small software in uh, your mobile. OK, through which you have to submit uh, photographs of your identity like uh, driving license, uh, something like that. Photographs of uh, you know ambience in your machine. Everything you would have to first of all upload. It takes around 15 minutes. OK, and after that, you know, uh, uh, they will provide you login to the examination. In my case, as there was much rush, because I did appear for this examination on Saturday, Sunday. OK, so it took around, you know, uh, 20 to 30 minutes for me to get login. Remember, 20 to 30 minutes. So sometimes, you know, your login is delayed because many people are in queue and because of which. OK, but this delay definitely, you know, it's a, it does not cut short your time for the examination. OK, so. I got a login maybe by 12 o'clock in the uh, midnight. You know, uh, my examination was up to 2 o'clock uh, in the midnight. Schedule examination at Prometric Center as per your convenience and working hours of Prometric Center 
Pearson's view conduct examination through prometric centers in India. For India, it's a Pearson view. There are two vendors actually. Uh, the other vendor works outside India, but for India, it's a Pearson view. Okay, so whenever you are scheduling the examination, it does ask you for the vendor. So there better you select for Pearson view. Okay. Online documentations and study pages are also available. So I will share these links with you. But here, just a couple of very important points I would like to, you know, bring to your uh, uh, notice again. So here is a link for documentation, and here is a link for examination study. Okay, online link. Remember. The content of this online link and the content of MOC are almost the same. OK, so I will always uh, you know, uh, suggest you to go for MOC first. OK, because there are, you know, small exercises also. So uh, MOC contains more things than these online pages. So I suggest you to go for MOC first. OK, so just a couple of uh, points to uh, highlight here. No negative marking. Try to attempt each and every question. Try to apply your logic. See, most of the questions are not memory based. And almost all questions are concept based. So try to apply your logic. OK, while going for the actual answer. Total passing score is 700 out of 1000. I did score good. Uh, I recently got a score of 906 out of 1000. OK, but there um, uh, it was because, you know, I was of impression of uh, examination is really tough and, uh, you know, I really worked very hard in covering the syllabus. And when I saw, I saw some good sign that examination had been diluted. OK, so. Again, you do not be complacent uh, that examination has been diluted. OK, just be on the toe while preparing for the examination. And yes, I'm pretty sure you will get a success. OK, anybody has any question on examination pattern? Let me know, please. If anybody has any question, please go ahead. Pattern is clear. Uh, sorry. Pattern is clear, uh, Chandra. Okay. Now let us begin with the topics. Sir, so, so uh, is it possible? Can we uh, uh, discuss about like the certification path? Is it like a uh, like expert level certification or introductory level certification? What are the paths to get to a solution architect kind of a profile in data solutions? I can talk about uh, it in uh, data processing only. Okay, so just give me a minute. Now in data processing learning path, what are all certifications? Let me explain to you. Data processing. Okay, there is one certification which is not mandatory to go ahead, but you know it covers all foundational concepts and it is called as a DP 900. Okay. Data processing fundamentals. Data processing fundamentals. Data processing fundamentals. I repeat again, it is not mandatory to complete this certification to go to other certification. So you can directly go for uh, DP203 also. Okay, DP203. It's a uh, uh, examination name. Uh, I already have mentioned here. Data engineering on Microsoft Azure. Data engineering on MS Azure. OK, here it covers Synapse Analytics, Databricks and other supportive uh, tools and uh, services available on Azure. OK, there is one more uh, certification and it is uh, DP 100. DP 100. This is basically for machine learning, data science associate, data 
science associate here it covers machine learning machine learning services on azure so there is something called as azure ml service okay there is something called as azure data bricks also data bricks also so actually azure data bricks is covered uh, with respect to data processing here in uh, short i call it as edb azure data bricks Azure Database is covered here in the context of data processing, and here Azure Database is covered in the context of machine learning. So data bricks is there in both these certifications, okay? But that is another thing. Okay, earlier there were other certifications which they have terminated as of now, okay? So we they may introduce new certifications uh, replacing them, but as of now. In data processing, these three certifications are there. In data processing, these three certifications are there. Okay, so very small uh, pipeline here. Okay, but very important also. Anything else? Do you want to know? No, sir. That's all. Thank you. Azure Synapse Analytics. Big data analytics solution on Azure. Now here I will not cover the topic, uh, you know, module by module. I will try to cover it in the logical sequence. So the point which I uh, find important to understand later concepts, both points I will cover. First, OK, and here I'm assuming that all of you are aware of you know, basics of uh, analytics. So what are all different terminologies and what are all different uh, basic concepts for analytics? I believe all of you are aware. Wherever you want more input on that, please do not hesitate to interrupt and immediately ask. Me. OK, at any moment you can interrupt and ask me. Uh, your queries. Data science process has been divided into these four verticals ingest, store, prepare, and train, model, and serve. Ingest means pulling the data from variety of the data sources. So, variety of the data sources may be CRM like any other system, different images, social websites, IoT devices, different large objects. Beads. Okay, from all these uh, data sources, you may pull the data uh, at one place. Okay, and for that purpose, what do you need to know? Uh, what do you need to do is ability to connect to these uh, different data sources. So ingest not only talk about pulling of the data, it also talks about ability to connect to around 80 to 90 different data sources very easily and quickly. And once you are able to connect to these data sources, you should be in position to apply different and different data cleaning, data transformation techniques. That is called as a data orchestration. Data orchestration. The vertical ingest also talks about data orchestration. What are all different transformations or data cleaning you want to apply on the data? different data transformations you want to apply on the data. So thereby, you know, after you duly transform the data, you are actually making data ready to prepare and train in analytics or in machine learning. OK, so once you apply all the necessary transformations on the data, your data goes on to the storage. And once it goes on to the storage, you know, thereafter then, you can use that data to build the machine learning models, to train the machine learning models, to test them. And once n number of machine learning models you create, and if you score their performance, okay, all these steps of training and scoring the performance, 
basically to identify best performing model. So after you identify best performing model, you know that model you would like to deploy in the production. And there then it comes model and serve. Your model gets deployed there in the production. You know that model will uh, receive the requests either uh, on HTTP protocol or it, it may receive uh, data for the prediction from uh, some, uh, some other data in the file or from the database. And after that, you know that model can be uh, made ready for the prediction. And after that, different applications may be using that model for the prediction. That is one way to do it. Sometimes you know that model is not meant for machine learning. It is only for analytics. OK, so here you, whenever you get the data in the storage, you may apply different and different operations over there to make. Joining to make aggregation on the data and the aggregated data, then you may upload to data warehouse because data warehouse is a queryable storage. And now you can query that data through different and different tools and different applications. So this area is called as the data consumption. So that data is made first of all consumable by uploading it to the data warehouse. And why data warehouse? Because data warehouse is queryable. Many of the tools and many of the consumers, you know, they can fetch the data through the queries. And that's why you have to have the data on the data warehouse. So that's all about a data science process. Mainly there are four verticals and in order to push or in order to take your data through all these verticals, there are different and different challenges. Some challenges are with respect to ing ingesting the data. Some challenges are with, uh, with respect to ingesting the, ingesting the data. Some challenges are with respect to applying data cleaning and data transformation. The interesting point is all the challenges and solutions on all the challenges are available in Azure Synapse Analytics. Are available in Azure Databricks also. OK, but. You know, uh, solutions are available in both these tools. OK, but uh, you know, in some tool, GUI interface is available to work with the solutions and in another tool, it's a programmatic interface programmable interface that you love to design. So obviously simplicity, uh, programming expertise, you know, these tools are different in that way. So in this process, we need descriptive and diagnostic analysis to apply, predictive analysis to apply, designing data flows there, okay, and workspace management. Now, whenever you apply descriptive and diagnostic analysis or predictive analysis, you end up creating mini codes, different data sets, different data frames, different codes. So multiple business artifacts you end up in creating. In order to you know properly maintain version those business artifacts, you have workspace management. So workspace management provides you enterprise level services uh, for managing all your business assets. Descriptive and diagnosis and uh, diagnostic analysis uh, analytics. Everybody knows what is uh, descriptive analytics and diagnostic analysis. What's happening in the business? Why it is happening? So this kind of analytics uh, you know, answer the questions like what is happening in the business and why it is uh, happening. Predictive anal analytics talks about uh, tomorrow's uh, and uh, future uh, answers to uh, uh, sorry answers to the questions uh, which are based on the future. What is likely to happen in the future based on the previous trends and patterns? Yesterday's trends, patterns and data uh, is used to build a model and that model can answer uh, for the happenings in the future. Designing data flow. Here multiple steps are to be carried out while designing end-to-end -end data pipeline. Okay, and orchestration of <coughs> these steps becomes uh, very important. And there comes designing data flow. <coughs> How to design data pipeline to ingest data from variety of the data sources. So these are a couple of multiple uh, steps to be carried out while uh, dealing with the big data analytics. Okay, and uh, these main steps I have mentioned here. 
on all these steps, you have one stop solution in in the form of Synapse Analytics. One stop solution for all the uh, steps. An integrated and unified analytics platform. Which combines data warehousing, big data analytics, <coughs> data integration, visualization. Into single environment. So data warehousing is RDMMS and queryable solution. Big data analytics is made possible uh, uh, here in Synapse Spark. So in this diagram, observe data warehousing is offered through Synapse SQ. Big data analytics is offered through Synapse Spark. Data integration and orchestration okay, has been offered through Synapse pipelines. Okay, and visualization into single environment is possible through the integration with the Power BI. Okay, so there in this uh, service, there are really endpoints which through which you can uh, you know, connect to this Synapse Analytics from Power BI. And the data here in Synapse Anal Analytics can be you know phased into Power BI to design different and different visuals, create different and different reports, and design different and different dashboards. Brings the best of SQL technologies to query enterprise data warehouse, Spark technologies to do big data analytics, pipelines and workloads to orchestrate uh, activities and data pipeline and workloads. Really. Okay, in case if you already are aware of Azure Data Factory, so here you will see in Synapse Pipeline, they are simply providing you all the means to work with Azure Data Factory. So in case if you are already comfortable with Azure Data Factory, you know, working through Synapse Analytics, uh, so sorry, Synapse Pipeline, okay, becomes damn simple because all those pages which you are comfortable uh, with, you know, you can see here in Synapse Pipelines. Two different rules, you know, here you can uh, use the Synapse Analytics to work. So data analyst may work over it, data engineer may work over it, data scientist may also work. So one-stop solution for different roles, one-stop solution for all the services needed for doing big data analytics. So Synapse Analytics workspace. OK, one, one more thing I forgot to talk about is Synapse Studio. Synapse Studio is a portal. It is a portal through which you can manage a Synapse links, Synapse pipelines, Synapse SQL, Synapse Spark. So one stop portal to work and do multiple activities. OK, one more thing I did not explain you about Synapse link. Synapse link is an arrangement to ingest the uh, row major data, get it transformed into column major data, and do a processing on column major data faster. So Synapse link okay, makes a tap possible. Hybrid transactional and analytical processing, H tap possible. It can ingest the data from Cosmos DB. Now, Cosmos DB holds the data in row major format. Get it transformed into uh, column major format and consume it immediately within Spark. So row major to column major. OK, automatically and automatically done, you know, with a very high speed. Why this is significant? Because this transformation otherwise either manually we used to do in past or it may take a longer time, but Synapse links, you know, makes it faster. Okay, because uh, uh, it does get this transformation done, not in Synapse Analytics, but in Cosmos DB itself. So Cosmos DB only adjusts the data after due transformation, which can be consumed in uh, Synapse Spark. OK. Remember, this is analytics processing. And analytics processing always works very fast. 
on column major data rather than on row major data. So in case if analytics engine gets the data in column major format, you know, it's a processing speed enhances, increases. Okay, Azure Synapse Analytics workspace, here you will see Synapse SQL, which uh, service I'm talking about as well, Synapse SQL. Synapse SQL has a two parts or two sub solutions. Data warehouse, we call it the provisioned or dedicated pool, provisioned or dedicated pool, and on demand. This is not dedicated. This is serverless option what they are giving. This is serverless option. So serverless SQL pool, dedicated SQL pool, and in order to process the data coming from both of them uh, for the analytics purpose, it is par. So these three are main services available here. In addition to that, you know, data pipeline can be designed using Synapse Pipe. Okay, here you observe dedicated SQL pool can get the data or can preserve the data in the form of database, which is RDBMS solution as well as in the form of object on data lake. Data lake is object storage. Now, what exactly object storage is? Object storage means a storage where files are stored. Files are stored. Data is stored in the form of the file. It can be a flat file also. Okay, so from here also it can get the data. Serverless SQL pool, you will observe here, it doesn't preserve the data in relational database format, observe here. Okay, it can get the data from the data from the flight file, flat file system. It can get the data from Spark tables, and it also can get the data from HTAP, that is from Cosmos DB. After you apply necessary uh, transformations and processing here, uh, so while you are applying a necessary transformations and processing here, you may be applying it through Synapse Studio. While you are applying it, you can monitor the things and you can manage. Uh, it's a security in the form of governance of the data and governance of the code. So code governance and data governance, both features are available here. For descriptive and diagnostic analysis, dedicated SQL pool and serverless SQL pool solutions are available in uh, Synapse. Uh, Analytics. So Azure Synapse SQL offers you the sub solutions as dedicated SQL pool and serverless SQL. For predictive analysis, Spark, Synapse Link, integration with stream analytics, all these things are possible through predictive analysis. For designing data flow, Synapse pipeline is there. And for workspace management, Synapse Studio provides a workspace where all business assets are preserved and can be provided with the privileges. That is workspace management. Okay, brief overview of Synapse Analytics. I already have given to you. Let us have you know more information about it. Okay, so designed for analytics workload for at any scale. Okay, so remember it has been designed for big data. SaaS developer experience for code free and code first. SaaS developer experience. You know, it is a kind of a service, all services at one place. Okay, so it is not a single service, but it is a combination of multiple services which are seamlessly interacting with each other. That's why SaaS developer experience. Multiple languages here you try to understand we are using Spark Engine. So Spark Engine brings lots of you know positive and interesting features along with it. So multilingual feature that on one Spark Engine you can you know, different developers can run different programs written in different languages. So SQL language you can write if you are from database background you can write analytics tip in SQL. If you are from scripting background, you, know, you can write analytics step either in Python or Scala. 
if you are from programming language background, oops, programming language background, you can write steps in Java or .NET. And if you are from pure analytics background, you can write steps using R. Different types of uh, uh, servers you get here, provisioned servers which have been dedicated for you, and on-demand servers you know, which offers you serverless options. Okay, different runtimes are there. So SQL runtime is there and Spark runtime is there. Different data integration features are there. All these features you are getting at one place. Okay, and what Synapse Analytics does is, you know, your business artifacts, it creates and maintain on data lake store. Data lake store. So whenever you are creating a Synapse Analytics, you know, down the line, it creates a data lake store. And all your business assets are minted on data lake store. In order to refer to your business assets, it is not essential for you to go through and to reach to through Synapse Studio always. You can directly refer the business assets okay, on the data lake store. Okay, so whenever you don't have this Synapse Studio service up and running for you, but if you have data lake storage on which your business assets have have already been maintained, you know, so that also you can refer. Synapse Analytics helps to build data pipeline for relational system, data lake, streams, and Cosmos DB. Built in support for Delta Lake. Now, what do you mean by Delta Lake? This term has been, has been recently coined, and in very short span of time, you know, this term has become extremely popular. The reason is, Many use cases are needing batch processing and stream processing, you know, working together in one project and in one data pipeline. Batch processing and stream processing, making it possible in one data pipeline, you know, is was really difficult. It was really difficult to control data integrity there, data consistency there. Okay, when these two different pipelines you know, are working together, it becomes very difficult to uh, maintain the data consistency. So they have introduced something called as the lake house. Lake house. You know, that concept is extremely popular uh, today, specifically in all those projects where you want batch processing and stream processing to work hand in hand. So there, that concept is extremely useful. Okay, uh, earlier we used to design such a project through Lambda architecture or Kappa architecture. With lots of problems we were facing. You know, this lake house has addressed all those problems and have given really elegant and easy solutions on those problems. Okay, so that's all about lake house. Okay, and its implementation in Databricks, Azure Databricks, that is called as a Delta Lake. That is called as a Delta Lake. So the Delta Lake also is a supported here. Delta Lake also is supported here. But remember this Delta Lake has a limited support in Synapse Analytics, although it's a full-fledged support is available in Databricks. And what is the difference? That Synapse Analytics uses a Spark, which is community edition, and Databricks uses a Spark, which is enterprise edition. Because of which, in Enterprise Edition, full support of Delta Lake is available and part support of Delta Lake is available in the Community Edition. I would like to take you to the tour of uh, Synapse Analytics. So here is my subscription. In this subscription, I will show you how to create Synapse Analytics uh, service. So for that purpose, I am asking to create a service. So I am clicking on plus create. Create a resource group. So maybe DP203. This is the resource group name. I am creating it in East US. Remember why? I prefer going with the East US or East US 2, that there are ample empty resources available. Okay, and uh, 
that region normally do not reject your request for getting any resource. If you try to create it in India, either you will not get that resource still available in India, or even if you get that resources in India, you know that resource cannot acquire uh, uh, necessary infrastructure. Like it may not get enough CPUs or SKUs. Okay, so to avoid that thing, you know, here I prefer going with a East US region. Clicking on review plus create, and here it is. I am asking you to create a resource group only. So finally, I am clicking on create, and it will create a resource group. I am clicking on go to resource group, and it is here. Now I want to create a service, so I am clicking on plus create. I am expecting everybody to be comfortable with uh, Azure portal. OK, so I am not going into the details here and there. Search for the marketplace. So Synapse Analytics, Azure Synapse Analytics, here it is. So I'm clicking over there. Azure Synapse Analytics. I'm clicking on Create. And here also you can see what it can do. Huh? Lots of points are mentioned here. Clicking on Create. Huh. Whenever you are creating this service, you know you may want to create a storage account and other things. OK, uh, those other things which are supportive to your service may be created into a different resource group. If you want to create them, not in this resource group, DP203, but somewhere else, you know, that name you can mention. OK, and there it will create all those services. Workspace name. So here, let me give some name. To the workspace. Again, I repeat, what do you mean by workspace? Workspace is the storage area where your business assets are maintained. So Chandra Synapse is the name I am giving to the workspace, but here it is asking me to give all lowercase letters. So Chandra Synapse. Yes. Hyphen is also allowed, so I am mentioning a hyphen here. Yes. Aisha, here it is saying it's not available. DP202. Now perhaps it is available. Now it is available. Region. Okay, I will go with the same region. What I have you know, selected the a resource group in East US. Somebody has any question? Now here it is asking me. Do I suggest it to create a new data lake store or do you already have some data lake store where you know uh, you want it to create a workspace? So I just want it to suggest to go with a new data lake store. So I'm clicking on create new. Chandra, Chandra, already Chandra, uh, EDL. Okay, uh, it is uh, suggesting me to remove hyphen. And uh, yes, this Chandra EDL name it has taken. So clicking on OK. And yes, it will create a Chandra IDL name. Now in this data lake store, I just want to mention the name of the file system. In other words, you also call it as a container. OK, so some name I will give here uh, to the container inside which this Synapse workspace it will create. OK, so Synapse system. Synapse system, so I'm asking to create a container with the name Synapse system. And that's all. Okay, so easy uh, 
to configuring it. No other settings I have to give and I'm clicking on. Is there a chat? Just a minute. Huh? No, here go to security and admin. Remember, whenever you are creating Synapse Analytics, there you will all, you may also create a database. You may also create a server. OK, to the database, if you want to connect from variety of the you know tools like uh, Data Explorer or uh, uh, server management tool, MS SQL server management tool, which is running on your local machine. So while connecting from such tools, OK, you need first of all to authenticate yourself. So what should be the username and password? It should declare and define. So I can give username and password which I can remember. So I'm giving username and password as my email. Okay, initial part of my email and the password which I can remember. This step is important in the sense that. Okay, this through this step only you can log in uh, to the database. That information I, I, I also have given and it is time for me you know, to click on review plus create. Remember workspace encryption. If you disable the data that will go inside the database will not be encrypted and will be threat to the security. I mean, uh, OK, so in case if you enable it, your data there will be preserved after due encryption. Choose to encrypt all the data at rest. So data at rest, observe here. Data at rest. It can offer you encryption by default, subject to if you have enabled it. Okay, with a key managed by you. Okay, this will provide double encryption with encryption at the infrastructure there that you expect. So it, it preserves the data properly and it secures the data. So as of now, I go with a disable. OK, and that's all. I'm clicking on review plus create. It will validate the configuration that I have given to you. OK, now here you observe one more thing. Serverless SQL would cost in terabytes 360 rupees. Indian rupees, 360 Indian rupees. So, uh, this cost you will have to incur, okay, for serverless SQL pool. Serverless SQL pool is available immediately after provisioning the workspace. You don't have to create it, okay? It creates it for you and follows pay per query billing model. It follows pay per query billing model. OK, the price shown is an estimate and does not reflect enterprise agreement credits or discounts. OK, more on the pricing you can learn from there. After this, I'm clicking on create and let us start provisioning this Synapse Analytics. Whenever it is provisioning uh, the Synapse Analytics, only two things you get ready there. The rest of the thing you will have to manually create. One thing is serverless SQL pool which you will get ready there. And second thing is workspace. Workspace you will get ready there. The serverless SQL pool, okay, is always there. Okay, you cannot shut down it. You cannot terminate it. You cannot delete it. It is always there, but it doesn't cost you until you run the query. So remember, even if serverless SQL pool is created, it does not start you billing. Okay, it will bill you only for the duration you execute the query there. Means so whatever be the compute it needs to run the query, you know, only for that compute it will charge. So it has started creating ADL. See here, it is creating ADL. On the ADL, it has created Synapse system. Uh, container also. Okay, here it has created the service. Service is also done. So multiple uh, services it is creating under Synapse server. Okay. 
anybody has any question in the meantime please go ahead by the time it is provisioned i can answer one or two questions Am I reaching to everybody there? Whether somebody is not facing problem, I believe nobody is facing the problem. Yes, you are. Let me just check whether somebody has sent me any message. Here. Uh, Chaitanya has given you an MOC form to fill. Aman, I have received a question from Aman. I want to know if there would be any break in between the session or it is going to be continuous session. Uh, no, Aman, <laughs> I have to take a break because I continuously I even cannot speak and I know you even cannot listen me. <laughs> so anyway, the first break we will have after uh, uh, 10 15 minutes okay and then by 1 30 we will have a lunch break also and whenever we will resume the session by 2 30 okay after that one short break of five minutes somewhere we will take okay uh, no no thereafter we don't have to take any break we will just conclude the session by four o'clock so first uh, 15 minute break we will have by 11.30. Second lunch break we will have uh, between 1.30 to 2.30 and thereby uh, thereafter by 4 o'clock we will conclude the session. Provisioning is still going on. And now it has to start creating service. Word space has been created, storage account has been created. And now it has to it has to create a workspace. And service is ready. Now I can go to the service. OK, deployment is successful. OK, so I want to go to the resource group first. And inside the resource group, see two services it has created. One is data lake store and another is Synapse workspace. So I'm clicking on Synapse workspace. And hereafter I will have to go to Synapse portal. Now here on this page, just observe workspace web URL. So using this URL, you can refer to the workspace portal. OK, you can directly connect to the ADL through this URL, data lake store. Azure data lake. You can connect to dedicated SQL pool through this endpoint. OK, when do you need to connect it? Through the management studio, SQL server management studio. You can connect to the uh, serverless SQL pool through the SQL server management studio using this URL. So multiple URLs here they are giving you. And here, open Synapse Studio. Here you will see hyperlink is being given, being given to open Synapse Studio in separate tab. So I'm clicking on this hyperlink. But before that, couple of other things would like to bring to your notice. OK, as of now, there is no Spark pool created. And there is no any other SQL pool means dedicated SQL pool is not yet created. What your name appearing here is a serverless SQL. It's a serverless SQL. So again, remember, you know, all these services and pools, whenever I are created, those will be listed here. As of now, only one service is up and running and it is built in serverless SQL. I am clicking Achha, in, in the left side margin. If you see. Encryption related setting you can do from here. Network related setting you can do from here. Identity related setting you can do from here. OK, if you want to create these pools from this portal page, that is possible. 
SQL pools also you can create. Apache Spark pool also you can create. If I click on SQL pool, OK, either I click on here or from here also I can ask it to create SQL. But here you will see, you know, there is no option to create serverless pool. OK, here it is option to create a dedicated SQL pool. If I go to SQL pools, there also, you know, this plus new. This plus new does not let me to create serverless SQL pool. It lets me to create dedicated SQL pool. So remember, a dedicated SQL pool is never automatically created. You have to explicitly create it. You have to explicitly create dedicated a dedicated SQL pool. And you have to explicitly delete it also. There is no way to create a serverless SQL pool or to delete it. Even if you select it, you know, this delete option, it must not enable it because it must not delete it. it cannot be deleted. Please change your selection and try again. So it has enabled that option by mistake, okay, but it cannot be deleted. So remember, either you cannot, neither you can create it nor you can delete it, okay, but dedicated SQL pool you have to explicitly create and explicitly delete also. Okay, so when I click on plus new, you know, it will ask me the configuration to create uh, dedicated SQL pool. Okay, fine. So multiple options and properties are here. If you go to properties, there also you will see uh, URLs. Okay, so here you can see URL uh, to connect to data lake store primary, primary data lake store. Dedicated SQL endpoint, serverless SQL endpoint, development endpoint, managed identity, all endpoints are you know, listed here. Okay, if you want to protect your uh, SQL, uh, sorry, analytic service from getting deleted by anybody by mistake. From here, you can add a lock over there. If you add a lock over there, nobody will be able to delete it by mistake. OK, so from here, you can add a lock over there. So all these options are available there. OK, I go to the overview page and I go to the portal now. Sir, huh. sir, sorry, one question. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm not very, very clear what is uh, data explorer pools. Can you please brief on that? Data explorer pool is under preview. And basically that is actually a compute that you have to create, you know, which is an alternative to uh, serverless uh, management studio. Alternative to server, uh, SQL server management studio. So this data SQL will be a browser based editor from where you can run the queries. So that is still under uh, preview. Yes, it is still under preview. Data Explorer. No, it is still not you know, uh, designed. It is under preview. But whenever it will be designed, you will see it's a browser based uh, editor to query and work with a uh, serverless and uh, dedicated SQL boots. So anyway, that's why I am not, uh, you know, able to speak more on that because I cannot show you anything. Okay. Okay, sir. Huh. Yeah. That feature is still to come. Okay. Now I am clicking on open. So here I am clicking on open, and it has opened a portal in the another tab. So this is another tab where it has opened it. It is still loading the portal.
and here it has loaded the portal in the left uh, margin. You will see different options. Home, data, business, integrate, monitor and manage. Here you maintain all the data related aspects. Here you maintain all script and programming and development related aspects. OK, here you do uh, designer data pipeline. Here you monitor uh, working of every of the uh, service. Working, sorry, monitor uh, execution of your query, monitor execution of your script code. Everything you can monitor from here and everything you can govern from here. Creating new users, allotting the roles to the users. Okay, everything you can manage from. If I go to data first, linked. There you see one entry is already appearing, and that entry is of the primary data next door. If you expand it here, it's the primary data next door. OK, if you go inside it. So this is primary data next door where to your synapse system is existing and all your artifacts are existing. OK, that also you can use for storing the data. It is also possible for you to use for storing the data. OK, but. Uh, remember, there is no way I can create a container here. Let me just try clicking on new folder. Does it create a container? OK, so maybe I want to create one container with an MC data. Clicking on create. And thereby I have asked it to create. A container there. But that container name. Uh, sorry, just a minute. Huh? Sorry, sorry. Here it has created a folder and not the container. OK, I want to delete it actually. Delete it. Or delete. Because it has created a folder. I want to create a container where I can upload the data, but there is no way I can ask it to create a container. Remember here, I'm not able to create a container. OK, so in order to create a container within the data lake store, you will have to take the help of the portal. So here what I do, I go to the resource group. I go to ADL. Data Lake store. Here there is only one container inside which it is going to create a workspace. I want to create a container. So I'm clicking on plus container and data. OK, I will leave its uh, public access level as a private. OK because I do not want my data to be made available publicly. And here it has created a container. OK, this container I will use to upload the data. OK, so if I go to the portal, now here it is yet not showing me the name of that container. So I can ask it to show me the name by clicking on this refresh button. Here there is a refresh button. So when I click over there, OK, now inside this, see, data container is appearing. If I click on the data container, I can upload the file from here. OK, so here what I will do, I'm just showing you how can we upload the data. So I'm clicking on upload. I will browse into my local machine from here. I will browse into local machine and I select the file that I want to upload. So here is one Parkway file which I am uploading. OK, and selecting it Parkway file. Now, what do you mean by Parkway file? That also I will explain to you. OK, but after this upload, we will take a tea break. OK, and post tea break, I will explain you what is the Parkway file. OK, so it's a time for us to take a tea break now. OK, 15 minutes tea break. We will resume our session by 11.45. In the meantime, we'll request Chetali and others you know, to take care of, uh, you know, uh, whether MOC uh, link everybody got and whether everybody got an access to MOC. Chaitali, are you there? Yeah, yes. Sure. I so will over take to you, Chaitali. Huh? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Guys, I have shared the MOC activation form in the chat box. Do fill out the form so you can get the MOC. That is Microsoft Official Curriculum. 
the free access to MOC for DP203. Meanwhile, in break time, do fill out the MOC activation form if you are yet to submit it. Thank you.
once again i request you all to share the response on moc activation form which has been mentioned in the chat box to receive the free moc that is microsoft official curriculum for dp203 the link for the moc activation form has been mentioned in the chat box so you can share your response on that to get the free moc for dp203 
Hello. Nias wants to see the last slide. So I'm sharing my screen. And this one is the last slide. Where we did stop looking at the slides. So this is the slide what you want to see Nias. This slide. OK, 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 I thought it is regarding uh, my slides. OK, so coming back to uh, Synapse Analytics, I wanted to mention uh, different storage formats. Storage formats. OK, CSV, comma separated values, separated values. There is also called as a TSV where tab separated values. You mentioned all the values in tab separated format. This is row major. Row major means whole record comes as a line and then another record goes into the another line. So whenever you pick up the first line, okay, you get all the attributes regarding one entity. If it is the employee data, you know, in the first line you will see employee number, name and all other details of the same employee. So that's why we call it the row major. XML or JSON. XML or JSON. <clears throat> they are key value pairs. Uh, not key value pairs in the sense that. Tags and key values. OK, again it is row major. Row major. So here. Uh, for one entity, one JSON document is dedicated and all the attributes mentioned in that document are in the form of the key values. That's why here I am mentioning uh, key value pairs. But one document has all the attributes for one entity. OK, another uh, uh, document you will have to read to get more details of the second entity. So it is also row major. OK, then comes Parkway. Parkway. It is a column major. Preserves data in encrypted form. Column major. Preserves data in encrypted form. Okay, and as it is column major, you know it is most suitable for analytics purpose because in analytics, you know you don't read data row by row. You read data column by column. So if you want to apply analytics, you don't apply on specific rules. You apply on the column. The column can be, uh, uh, you know, salary uh, earned by uh, employee within an year. The whole salary we may have to read. We are not interested in individual figure. We may be interested in calculating the average of the salary of all the employees. OK, so that's why it is a column major. OK, it is most suitable for most suitable for analytics workload. Workload. So all column major uh, representations are always most suitable for analytical workload because in analytical workload you pull the data or you get the data column by column. That's why. OK, then there is a Avro also. Avro. Acha, here data schema is also maintained huh? in Parkway. You know at the beginning. Data schema, what are all column names? What are all their types? Everything is maintained. Is maintained at the beginning only. Avro. Avro is a row major. Row major with uh, uh, schema maintained. Maintained. At the beginning, okay, in the form of JSON. 
Okay, and there is a special provision data type available here for date time. Okay, data type can deal with can deal with date time stamp hmm, data type. Okay, so where uh, uh, row major data? Now this is a default uh, serialization for Hadoop. Default serialization. For Hadoop. Okay, so these are main uh, data formats. Besides this, you can pull the data from relational database management system also against the query that you are running. Okay, so that is again a different format. RDBMS. So where you get the data as uh, against the execution of the query. So multiple data formats are there. Among these data formats for analytical workload, you have Parquet. OK, and wherever there is a special need of dealing with a timestamp, you can think of going with an arrow. So here I have uploaded this Parkway file. OK, and now I want to. Uh, run the queries on this Parkway file. So for that purpose, you know, I will be writing some script. OK, so just observe here what the steps I did follow uh, in uh, data. Uh, here is the data option. You know, I did see uh, primary storage there. And if you observe, OK, primary Chandra ADL name is also appearing. So this is the primary storage where I have uploaded the data. Uh, sorry, I have created a container with the name data and I have uploaded the data there. OK, this data then we can query, uh, uh, query also. So in order to query that data, you know, I may ask it to write. I right click here on that file and I may ask it to write one query, select top 100 rows. If I click there, see what it did. It opened one script file. OK, and there it has given me one. Uh, it has written one query for me. OK. Now here I change the name of the script file. SQL 010. OK. Uh, open row set. Open row set. Fine. I'm closing this properties file from here. Here I have given the name to this file. And in this file, just observe the query. Select top 100. I simply want to see first 100 records from open row set. Open row set has a round curly brace, sorry, round brace here and round brace here. So it means open row set is a function. OK, and what this function does is. In this to this function, I am submitting the uh, file name from where I want to read the data and the file format also. In the file name, just observe URL to that file I am mentioning here. HTTPS colon slash slash name of the ADL. Data Lake store DFS or Windows, NATE, data is a container name and inside that container, you know, uh, file name I am mentioning. Let me put this query to run. And when I put it to run, it has to show me the data. After bringing it from Parkway file, so I am putting it to run from here. Before that, I publish this query. Remember when I publish. Your uh, script is preserved, stored in the workspace. So I have to store it in the workspace. OK, yes, this script I want to store clicking on publish. OK, and let it store it in the workspace. Otherwise, the changes what I would have done, I may lost it. Publishing is done and now I can put that query to run. So clicking here. And just wait for here. It is showing you the time it is taking to retrieve the result of the query. And once it gets the result, and that result it will show. Remember now. So I got the result. OK, now here very interesting to know. On which pool this query got executed. So remember this has been connected to. Built in serverless pool. It has been connected to built in serverless pool. OK, and built in serverless pool interpreted this query converted this query into n number of small steps 
from the query it came to know to which uh, uh, external data source it has to connect to and what file format it has to understand. OK, and accordingly it brought the data and here is the data. OK, it has got a schema. OK, here is the column names. That is a part of the schema in the Parkway file. OK, and it also got the data. So here you can see whole data. If you want to draw some charts, you can draw them from here also. OK, what type of chart do you want to draw? Which columns you want to move where? That chart also you can draw. I go with a table structure and uh, uh, that's how I have got the data. Now, couple of things. This query hasn't brought the data into serverless SQL. What it did is data is still in Parkway file. It simply understood the schema of the data and brought that data as a part of the result of the query. That, part, that data hasn't been cached into serverless SQL pool at all. So serverless SQL pool has a compute engine to run the query, but it doesn't have a storage. That's why data is still on Parkway file. It is simply mapped with a uh, schema and that data is shown to you. So this way, you know, different ways are there to write such a query. OK, and you can bring the data from there. That's how you can query uh, this. We will see more types of such queries, but here I am just introducing to you how can we create the uh, script file? How can we uh, uh, say get the data from the primary storage? So this file we are getting. In order to refer to that script file, okay, I have to go to the develop option. And in develop option, you can see that script file. So this is a script file which is appearing here. Let me close this tab now. I don't see anything here. Let me close this tab. And here you can see execution of the uh, script file. All your script files are maintained under the development tag. All your data related issues are maintained inside data tag. OK, one more uh, thing I would like to uh, do for you now. I want to create one storage because normally, you know, your data will not be in the primary storage of Synapse. That is normally you will avoid. OK, you may have to give somebody a privileges to refer to the data and there you will definitely uh, avoid to give privileges to the Synapse system. OK. So what I go, I'm going to do now, I will create one more uh, storage account here and then I will see and I will try to bring to your notice. How can we get the data from the storage account into Synapse Analytics? So for this purpose, here I'm clicking on plus create. Here I'm clicking on plus create. OK, and I search for storage account. Storage. Create. Resource group 203. Storage account name. Chandra Blob. Blob store. Chandra Blob store in East US. I go with the standard performance. This is not for production, so I will not go with the premium to incur more cost. I will go with standard to reduce the cost in the development environment further. You know, I will reduce the redundancy factor also, and I will go with a locally redundant. Locally redundant is the cheapest because it maintains three copies within the data center. OK, and why? Uh, in the production, we don't prefer going with a locally redundant because if that whole data center goes down, you know, whole data uh, becomes inaccessible. OK, for the period that data center is down. And that's why people may prefer zonal redundancy or global redundancy in the production environment. OK, 
Now here I want to create storage account and I do not want to create a data lake store. Remember, data lake store Gen2 can be created from here only. Means for creating data lake store Gen2, there is no separate service available. You have to create a block storage only. But in the block storage, if you go to advanced part, you know, here you simply have to check this box. Simply have to check this box. This box asks it to create a hierarchical namespace. Hierarchical namespace means root folder, subfolder, sub subfolders, exactly a similar kind of namespace what is there in Windows. Okay, so data lake store support hierarchical namespace. Blob storage does not support hierarchical namespace. The namespace what blob storage supports is called as a flat namespace. Flat namespace means there are virtual folders. Actually, those folders, subfolders, and a file name, the whole mix one file name of that file. So if it a file name is abc.txt in a hierarchical namespace under the folder A, there is a B folder under the B, there is a C folder under folder C, there is abc.txt. So in order to reach to abc.txt, you will have to go to A folder. From there, you will have to navigate to B and then you'll have to navigate to C. But in case of flat namespace, A slash B slash C slash abc.txt, this whole becomes a file name. So A, A folder, B folder, you know, that become part of the file name, but actual folders do not exist there in blob storage. That's why we call it flat namespace storage. I'm not checking here because I want to create blob storage. Okay, but if I want to create a data lake store, I would have checked this. I'm clicking on review. And here it is, it will create a storage. So I'm clicking on create. And now we will have to wait for two minutes for it to completely provision it. Let me just check somebody is at the doorstep in the meantime. Perhaps it will be created. Just give me a minute. So I'm clicking on go to resource. It has created a blob storage. OK, I'm going inside of a blob service. And here I want to create one container over I inside which I want to upload one data file. So I'm clicking on plus container. OK, naming this container as a data. I'm leaving its public access level as a private and clicking on create. Inside this data container, I want to upload one data file. So for that purpose, I'm clicking on upload. Clicking on upload. OK, browsing. And here, loan data raw.csv file I'm uploading. I just want to check with you whether my pages are reaching to you well in time. And whether are you able to follow my steps? Am I audible there? So Arjun says yes. That he is able to follow me and uh, my pages are and uh, are reaching to you uh, properly, and there is no drop. That's what I am assuming. Yeah, yes. 
Yeah. Okay, so I have uploaded one file, and this file now I want to access into Synapse Analytics. So for that purpose, I go to Synapse Analytics, and the very first thing what I do, that the storage what I just have created, that storage I want to add as a secondary storage. See, here we did uh, uh, access primary storage. This URL is, is to primary storage. We did access primary storage, but now I want to add that storage as a secondary storage and access that file. So for that purpose, here I'm going to the data. Links, OK, and here I want to add a secondary storage. This is the primary storage. Again, you observe here primary word. So I want to add a secondary storage, so I'm clicking on plus. Connect to external data. Azure blob storage. Clicking on continue. OK, uh, asking me to create a link service. If you have worked with a data factory, OK, this is something uh, you already have done. OK, so same set of pages and same look and feel. What you have experienced there in data factory you know, is uh, appearing here. So link blob storage. So link. Chandra. Store storage. Some name I am giving. OK, you will not mention your name here. Ideally, maybe you, you will mention project name. Okay. Yeah. Auto resolve integration runtime account key connection string from the subscription. And here I am selecting the subscription. And here it is asking me the storage account name. So Chandra Blob Store is the name that I am giving. And then here I want to test the connection. In order, once it comes to know the storage name, it has acquired account key for that storage and it is ready uh, to get connected to it. So I'm clicking on storage. And yes, it has got necessary credentials to connect to the storage. So I'm clicking on create. So storage has been created. OK, now it is not appearing OK as a secondary, so I can click on this refresh button. OK, before that any publishing, if I have to do, I will. But as of now, I don't have to do any publishing. So clicking on refresh. And here you observe. Chandra, sorry, Azure Blob Storage is appearing. Link Chandra Storage inside that link you will see data container and if you click over there you know here is a file that you have uploaded now this data container which was of the primary storage i am closing from here whenever i need it i will i can open it okay because otherwise you know uh, because of the name result balance it may add uh, to the confusion i want to access this data for that purpose I want it to write a new script file. So here I'm selecting it. I will change the name of this file and I can change its name to SQL 020 loan data. Load data. File name I have changed. And let me put this query to run. I'm closing this properties uh, blade. OK, and I want to run this query, so I'm clicking uh, over here. But before that, let me publish all the things. So hereby I'm publishing uh, the changes I did in script. Uh, publishing is done. Also observe that this script OK has been connected to the serverless pool and on the serverless pool, you know, we are getting one ready database that is called as a master database. So that master database you are already getting. Remember, serverless pool and master database, they are created whenever you are creating this service. So you don't have to, you know, uh, create them manually. Neither you can create them nor you can delete them. I want to run this uh, uh, query, okay, on the built-in serverless pool. So I can click on create, uh, run. And uh, see here it has started executing the query. 
cannot be opened because it does not exist. OK. Used by another. Just a minute. Just a minute. Grab block storage. Door windows. DFS core window. You have to mention here DFS. Publish. Why is showing me red mark? Very completed, but still it is not giving me result. Cannot be opened because it does not exist or it is used by another process. OK, ideally this query has to run. I may have to find out a reason why it is not being executed. In the meantime, let me do one thing. Let me change the access level of that container. Remember. I'm trying to get a result. Okay, I have changed the access level and now let me put that query to run. Now I just executed. Still it is not being executed. Yeah, I got it. So earlier I mentioned wrong URL. Now I corrected it, but I changed the access level. It is because you know for running this query, I haven't uh, 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 created a data source. Data source is the concept which preserves uh, the credentials to connect to uh, the pipe. That object I haven't created and that's why it was giving me the problem. But somehow a similar query which was bringing the data from the Parkway file, you know, is now bringing the data from the CSV file. It's a similar query. OK, if you compare uh, query over there, OK, and query over here, almost the same. You can uh, do not bother about the parser version. This is for CSV file, but otherwise you are getting the data. So this is how you are getting the data. OK, multiple such queries we can try. Uh, on getting the data from uh, loan data. OK, so. Clicking on publish, so here what we did. We got the data from the secondary storage. OK, and here is the uh, data what we have got is from the secondary storage. But remember again, the data which is being brought from there you know, is as a part of the uh, response of the query. It is not being cached. Data is still existing at the external data source. Okay, only it is being mapped here. A okay, couple of more such queries. Let me try executing. In the meantime, anybody if has any question on this, they can go ahead. It's showing like this. Yes. So here we got the data from the Parkway file also. Now a couple of other commands. Here I already have shown you how can we get the data from CSV file also. OK, one more script now I want, I want to create and thereby 
we will try to get the data from this loan data raw.csv, but in other possible ways. So for that purpose, I go to develop, okay, and I create a new script here, new script. Zero three zero serverless. Okay. In the serverless now, I want to create one database. Okay, and then in that on that database, then I want to now here we are using master database. Okay, but now I want to create explicit the you the custom uh, database explicitly. Uh, to uh, run the query at. So for that purpose, anybody has any question? It is a create database query. I am. I want to execute. Remember, in the master database, I can run this query. Yes. Name of the database. Let me cut short. Create database data exploration DB. So, okay, let me go, go with uh, or let me cut it short to data uh, DP203 DB. DP203 DB. So, I am putting this query to run. See on the master database, I am running this query. Master database normally is for reading the database and doing some administrative work. Okay, so I will run this query and thereby. I will expect it to create a database for me. And on that database, then rest of the things I will do. Clicking on the run. And let us wait for it to create a database. Okay. Before I refresh, okay, I just want to publish uh, the changes that I have done in the script. Okay, in the serverless uh, 030. And then I will refresh it. Okay, because now I want to connect to that newly created database and I just do not want to connect uh, to the master database here after. OK, so I am refreshing it as of now. Now I am getting a database name there, so I am clicking uh, here. OK, and this uh, script, no new script I will have to create, not this one. Sorry, let me go this uh, script with a master only. OK, and let me create a new script file. Uh, for the new database, new database that we have created. OK, so new script file let me create. New script file, I will name it as 040. Uh, work database. Work database. OK, and this work database now let me connect to the new database. Here it is. Yes, every query that I will give here will be executed on this database. But remember, this database will. Not cache the data. The data will be there in the storage account only. But this database will hold whole metadata. Metadata like schema and other things. OK, this is let me publish. And now let me put a couple of uh, commands there. My database is ready. OK, whenever I'm creating my database, you know, there in the data section, you can have a look at it. OK, here, let me refresh it. As it created the database, I think in workspace, I will have to see it. Uh, name of the created database. Yeah, I will have to refresh it from here. Then only I can see the name there. Yes, now I can see the name. And here is the database. In the database, just observe. Observe the available entries there. External table, external resource, views, schemas. But there is no option here to see the list of the tables. What you can see, list of the external tables. So external tables means what? The database will hold a schema only and actual data is held externally. So actual data will be in the storage account and only schema you can refer from here. OK, 
Now on the external. For that external data source, I want to create a storage. So here I want to create a storage on that. So in the uh, script file, okay, just observe. I want to refer to the loan data raw dot CSV and for that purpose, first of all, external data source I have to create. Storage name here I will have to mention. Storage name there is uh, it's a Chandra blob store. So that name let me mention here. Chandra blob. OK, data is a container name there. And here you observe this path. I am simply creating up to the container. Because here I'm declaring external data source. Naming it as a loan data. Now let me change its name. It should not be loan data. It's it can be, you know, any data uh, which I upload there, not always loan data. So project data or uh, bank data, say, say we are dealing with a bank uh, domain, say. Okay, so bank data. So here what it will do, it will create external data source only. So when I am putting this query to run, it will create external data source only. So only external data source it will create. Uh, it will uh, preserve the details of that external data source there. Okay, and on that external data source now I can run the queries. Okay, if I go to external resources. Okay, it has to show me bank data uh, source it has created, but I think I will have to refresh it. No, it has got it. Bank data source it has created. OK, the next query which I want to uh, uh, run here is uh, to query that loan data. So this is another way to query the loan data. Earlier we tried in the different way. Now this is another way to query loan data. So loan data raw CSV is uploaded file there. OK, uh, data source name is not a loan data, but now it is a bank data. So that thing I place here. Bank data. Format is CSV, parse version. And first row. Now, what is this? Earlier, I did not give this option. So, first row means, uh, uh, you know, uh, we will try to run this query having the value of the first row as one. We will see the output. And thereby, we need to, uh, we need to correct the uh, query. So looking at the output, you will tell me what corrections do I have to do. OK, so I'm putting this query to run now. It will also read the data from loan data raw dot CSV. And here you observe. It has picked up the column names here. It has picked up the column names. And uh, it has picked up the first row as a part of the data actually first row is representing here schema and still it is picking up it as a part of the data so now if i make it two and now let me show you the result and now there you observe the first row which was representing the column names now that row is not appearing as a part of the data the first row is two means I'm intimating to it to go to record two directly to pick the actual data part and don't refer to the first row bypass reading of the first. So that's how you know this query I am giving. OK, I can mention the column names also because here you observe you know, it has picked up the column names which are not relevant to me. OK, so here is another query where now we will see how to mention the column names. For the examination, you know, what should you write here? They may leave this place blank and they may ask you top 10 uh, asterisks to be chosen from given options. OK, uh, what should you write here? That blank place they may leave and there may be a number of options uh, below. Open the roset option you have to 
select here. So those types of questions may be asked. OK, and here you observe. In this call uh, in this data set. You know, this is the first column. OK, this is identifying. Uh, uh, this is index column and this is the key column. This is the primary key column. OK, so I want the name to this column to be given as loan ID. And in the CSV file, it is the second column that is what I'm representing. And I am also imposing uh, type of the column. So I want it to treat this column as a where can. OK, gender. The next column, the third column from the left, this one. OK, which is a C3 here. Now I want to give it a name gender. OK, and it is small int type. And that is the third column from the left in the CSV file. Fourth column from the left in the CSV file, this one. Sixth column from the left in the CSV file, this one. And applicants income, eighth column from the left, this one. So here now I'm mentioning uh, the, uh, the projection also. And this query, let me put it to run. And let us see its output. Uh -huh. I forgot to select two hyphens there. Acha, loan data that I will have to change because here I have mentioned bank data. OK. Yes. And here I have got the data and see how column names it is giving. So such type of queries we are supposed to give. OK, and now here as uh, this file is having CSV. OK. Uh, and format is CSV. If this file is Parkway, I would have I would have mentioned format as Parkway. So different file formats it can work with. Next query, query with a where class. So different clauses are also allowed there. Okay, so see here in this query, where class has been mentioned. Where clause has been mentioned here, you observe marital is equal to one. So that's what I'm mentioning. I simply have to change this to bank and let me put it to run again. OK, and now it will show you only that data which is meant for mar marital status one. Here you can see data of the marital status one. OK, and first 10 records it is showing. OK, you can increase this count to see more than 10 records. OK, so thereby where clause uh, is allowed in that query. OK, distinct. Observe this query. In the select clause, you know, some aggregation function I am applying there. OK, and, and the, that aggregation function can be uh, given alias also. OK, so count distinct marital. How many valid values of marital column? That count also I want to know. OK, uh, so as marital, so I'm putting this to run in this. Uh, not only you can see uh, the projection declared, you also can see again here. I have to mention bank. I can see in earlier queries I have mentioned top uh, 10 star, but now here I'm mentioning some function aggregation function to be applied over the data. OK, so this query I am putting to run and see its result. The point of this exercise is to bring to your notice. You know how external tables can be created and how external tables can be queried. There are many such clauses available. OK, uh, using which you can write the query. Group by, observe here, group by, group by marital. And marital is a count I am giving here. Group by marital. And here I have to change it. Bank. Open data row set. Count marriage. Fine. This query I want to run. So for that purpose. 
in the examination, you know, such type of queries are asked giving uh, blank at one place and you have to select appropriate choice there. And for marital status zero, for unmarried, there are two 150 records and for married, there are around 400 records. So that uh, count I can see here after grouping by on marital status. So group by where such type of clauses we already have seen. OK, here is a way to give the query uh, the order by. Okay. So here I, I want to order it in uh, descending order of applicants income. Order by in descending order of applicants income. This fellow is earning maximum income. OK, and this fellow is earning least income. So all the you know, records have been arrayed in the descending order of applicants income. Yes, working with Parkway files, working with JSON files. You know, multiple uh, ways uh, to work with. This is uh, working with a JSON file. Anyway. OK, this is how uh, you uh, work with a serverless SQL pool. Anybody has any question on uh, whatever I have covered till to this uh, uh, time? Let me know, please. OK, in the meantime, how do I drop external data source? That query, let me put to run. External data source, now I want to drop. OK, here I created external data source at last. Now I may want to drop it. And name of the data source. So I created external data source as a bank data. I would like to drop it. Here. So it will drop external data source now. But before I drop it, would like to check with everybody, okay, whether it is clear or you have any question on this. So, uh, Chandra, can we uh, get an example in what scenario we'll be using a uh, uh, external data source or a workspace or uh, you know uh, the option where in, uh, we want to live with like a, a, a pre-made or NoSQL kind of Got it, got it. See, many a times what happens that you may not have a data uh, on the database. Some tool might have accumulated data in the JSON format. Some tool might have accumulated data in the CSP format. Whenever you are capturing the data from uh, log files, okay, uh, where you know a log is a uh, persisting the data in the CSP format. There, your data is already in the CSP format, but you want to query it. Till to the date, what we used to do is, in order to query such a data, we used to move that log data, CSP data, to the database because till to the date, we did have only one way to query, and it is a database. But now, without migrating data from CSP format to the database, we want to query it, and here we are doing that. So log files may accumulate data in CSP format. There may be data which we have got from some document database, which is in JSON format. And without converting it into, without migrating it into database, I want to query it. Sometimes we may get data from IoT devices which is in JSON format again. And without doing a migration, I want to query the data. So this is the way. Many tools, you know, uh, create the data in the format other than RDBMS format. How do we then query such a data? So without migrating the data to the database, having the data at the same place where it was, 
but still querying, you know, is possible through serverless SQL queue. Okay. Got it. Anybody has any other question? Can't we make first row data as column names? No, here in this case it is not possible because here we have to explicitly mention the schema. So in this case it is not possible. But I understand your question. In Spark it is possible. Okay, but in the serverless group it is not possible. Anybody else has any other question or shall I go ahead? Hi Chandrachin here. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Drop external data source, right? It's only the link that is getting dropped, right? Not the data in the blog. Right? No, no, only the link. Only oh. the link. Huh. So external data source means what actually? Uh, uh, the object that is actually holding the credentials uh which are used while you do the query while, while you run the query that object is dropped so whenever you say link i will not say uh, that it drops the link which is created in synapse already that link is still there but the object which is used to connect to the data uh, sorry data source and you know data uh, by, while running the query the data is pulled in that object is dropped now here the syntax of this external data source creation is very simple. OK, and in this uh, syntax, I haven't mentioned SAS token and access key, but those things also I can mention here and I can pull the data. Why I have gone with a so simple syntax? It is because I have created a link service. So down the line, it is using that link service to get the data. That's why it doesn't need the credentials. So that object only drops, link still remains intact, data still remains intact, and storage that still remains intact. Only object uh, from this database is dropped. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Raj. Okay. So does, now does also this the, mean that the results that we have, the results yeah. that we get after the query, are they uh, cached or like uh, do we have to run the query again to get the results? Can we cache the results uh, and use it for later purpose? We can cache the results, but for that purpose, you have to have some other system at a place. By default, we don't cache the result because the serverless SQL pool does not have its own storage. It doesn't have its own storage. That's why we miss it here. Actually, the results are not getting cached. Every time you run the query, it has to get the data from the storage account. It has to get the data from the storage account. By default, it is not caching the results. Have I made uh, that point clear? Yeah, yes, yes. So, Chandra, in case say different users say at a time simultaneously wants to run, that right. means each of one has to create his own data source. Does that mean that way, or it is what exactly is this data source object uh, that is? Uh, data source object is an object created inside his database, and inside this database, paths which you want to refer to that is registered along with the credential to connect to that database. Here you observe this path. OK, now if you don't create the data source. OK, here you may have to mention that whole path. And in every query, you will have to mention that whole path. OK, so try to understand uh, how verbosity of your code it will increase. So basically, actually, data source is a kind of a, what we say uh, designing a metadata which is holding necessary information uh, to uh, use the credentials to get the credentials to connect to the data source as well as the path from where it has to bring the data 
So it is just a kind of a metadata object which holds a path to the place from where you want to do the querying. OK, and now in the query, once you mention the data source name, you know, paths can be relative and they cannot be or they may not be uh, absolute. Oh, yeah. Got it. Yeah. So I'm dropping the external data source now. So this is the query to drop it. And yes, it has been dropped. If I want to drop the table, here is a command to drop the table also. OK, so I'm dropping the uh, not table, sorry, sorry database. OK, I, I want to drop the database also, but I will drop the database from the same uh, uh, script where I created it. So here I created the database. Now let me drop the database here. OK, so I have already connected this script to master. So from the master, I will run the query to drop the database. From the same database, I cannot run the query to drop itself. I have to go to master. So this script I already have connected to master and from the dropping <coughs> the database. So database also has been dropped. If I refresh this page, anyway, this entry, it will last. We will not see this database there. I'm publishing it. By end of the session, we will dedicate at least half an hour to go through a couple of sample questions. Thereby, you will get idea what type of questions are asked in the exam. <coughs> Let us work on just a minute. One more thing I want to show to you. I have already have shown to you serverless SQL. Okay. Chandra, sorry, one more question I had. Uh, if uh, we don't publish the uh, query, can we still run that query or what happens to the query if we don't publish it? <laughs> when we don't publish it, you know, sometimes what happens, the uh, content in that script file are lost. So publishing means what? As con pressing control S. Control S means save your contents, right? So okay. just so saving, saving only. Query. Publishing means just saving, yeah. nothing more than that. Got it. All these script files, let me close. Now let us uh, work with a dedicated SQL uh, pool. So we here we created a serverless SQL pool. Now let us work with a dedicated SQL pool. But before I go ahead, I would like to take you to a couple of other steps of uh, data warehousing. Okay, components of Synapse SQL. It enables you to implement data warehousing and data virtualization scenarios using standard DSQL. A dedicated SQL pool. Dedicated SQL pool doesn't get automatically created. Or if you create, you know, uh, it doesn't get automatically uh, terminated also. Okay, we can set some time out there. Okay, but otherwise explicitly we have to shut it down. Serverless SQL pool, you cannot create or you cannot uh, terminate or you cannot delete it. OK, it is automatically created and it is serverless. Serverless means what? That whenever you create a pool or whenever your uh, service creates the pool, you know, it doesn't bill you. It builds only when you run the query over there. So built in SQL pool that has been created here already. OK, so here I go and here SQL pools. In the SQL pool, you can see built-in SQL pool has been created already and it is online. It is up and ready. So it is not charging you at all because it is not executing any query. So when you submit a query to it, which query did you submit to it? So you submitted this query to it. These queries, whenever you are submitting to it, at that time what it does is it just check the size of the data and the complexity of the query 
and accordingly it decides how many servers it will need to uh, perform the massive parallel processing of this query. And those many servers it takes from its ready uh, pool, okay, runs the query and sends the servers back. So, you have, so those servers are brought out of pool only for the period of executing the query. And you will be charged only for the period, you know, those servers are run, working on your query. Once your query is completely executed, those uh, servers go back to the pool. And thereby they stop billing you. This is basically for unplanned and ad hoc workload. Whenever you want to run the query, okay, and you uh, you don't want to, you know, make the environment ready and other things, okay, just run the query and get the result. That is serverless as well. And why we call it as a serverless? Because we don't configure the server. We don't decide how much size of the server we need. We don't decide which kind of machines, uh, D series machines, C series machines, what series machines we want there. Everything is decided by it itself. So serverless means don't go on that meaning that it doesn't need a server. Serverless means for you. Your servers are completely transparent. You don't create a server. That's why they are calling it as a serverless, but truly servers are essential to run the query. It will pull the servers from the pool, will run the query and those servers will go back to the pool. When it receives a query from somebody else, it will pull those servers from the pool, run that query, show the output and will those servers will go back to the pool. So shared, this becomes a shared of servers. For running the ad hoc work. Dedicated SQL pool, whenever we will create, we will have to give the size of the cluster. Okay, and those many, you know, uh, servers are dedicated for you, reserved for you. You will keep billing for the period those servers are there. Okay, so dedicated experts. Azure Synapses part, develop big data engineering and machine learning solutions using Apache Spark or Azure Synapse. Machine learning workloads. Okay, Spark version has been changed. Now it is 3.1, huh? Yes, now it is 3.1. 1 or 3.2, whatever it be. Synapse pipeline, I already uh, explained you. Leverages the capabilities of Azure Data Factory for doing ETL work, extract, transform, and load, or ELT work, extract, load, and transform. Data integration service that allows you to create and schedule schedule data-driven work. You can schedule them. Whether on every day, 6 o'clock, you want to run them, or you want to run them based on some event that you can configure. The next link, it is to you know, leverage the uh, power of edge tap, hybrid uh, transactional and analytics workload, perform analytical processing, analytical processing over transactional and operational data. Yes, transactional data comes through OLTP workload and using OLTP workload uh, for analytical processing, okay, you can think of using synapse. Your data may be existing in the row major format and that you want to convert it to column major. There are multiple ways to do this transformation transparently from row major to column major. Okay, why we are talking much here? If you or somebody of you are already working on uh, data bricks, you know, this thing transparently happened there. But in that case, in order to do this transformation, you know, the cluster of the Databricks is there. 
and thereby you know the cluster of the data bricks uh, while doing other thing you know does this transformation also okay so thereby definitely you know uh, the power of the data bricks cluster is used but in h tab it doesn't use the power of the synapse analytics it creates a separate special server to do this transformation and that server is created inside a cosmos db okay and it uses the power of that server to do this transformation and as that server is dedicated only for this transformation you know that server does not hamper uh, work of the spark cluster okay and that server you know does the transformation work very fast because it has been dedicated for this transformation only thereby we get high performance of transforming oltp workload into olap workload that is the purpose of synapse i kept asking you for any question okay and thereby you know i do expect from you to put forth the question remember if you don't ask me the question how do i come to know exactly which area is new to you exactly which area you want me to explain more so again my humble request to everybody don't be in impression that i can read your mind okay you will have to express uh, the problems you are facing okay i am here to you know answer to your problems but otherwise not possible at all for me to read your mind okay we already have gone through the uh, these steps so let me begin with a next module now this is lesson actually it's uh, it's not mapped with a curriculum huh? this is module 2 here but it is a part of module 1 of the curriculum as your data bricks i already told you okay, and that can be uh, a service uh, created and available in azure so i take you to that service i am inside a resource group here i am clicking on plus create and here i search for data bricks azure data bricks okay so that service is available here remember this service i basically is being used by data bricks incorporation data bricks incorporation has been collaborated with azure to offer the first class citizen product of data bricks here on azure so this azure data bricks it is not data bricks remember it is azure data bricks Hello. I thought it was on office. Okay. So this is first class citizen product available on Azure. It is not a third party product because uh, this product has been introduced uh, after introducing some of the Azure features in Databricks. So now uh, this is Azure Databricks. So from here we can create it. If you go to uh, all services, let us see in all services under which uh, category, which products are available. Okay, so here, see, there are multiple categories. And in analytics category, there you can see Azure Databricks. Here you can see Synapse Analytics also. OK, other things what you can see here, Stream Analytic Jobs. Stream Analytic Jobs is a special service available to perform Stream Analytics. Stream Analytics. Now, what is the batch analytics and what is the Stream Analytics? The analytics that is done on the historical data, the analytics that is done on the data which is already stored in uh, some uh, storage. Okay, data is at the static. Uh, uh, data is already in the static storage, and that data may be running in petabytes also. Huh? 
but that is called as a batch processing where your data is the uh, either of the historical nature or is of the static nature and you want to do the processing okay irrespective of the size of the data okay so data may be very large in size and that's why in batch processing you need a very large cluster to complete a processing well within time so for batch processing data size is very large data is uh, static in nature and you need a much large compute to complete the processing within hours minutes okay stream processing stream processing means data is a real time uh, it is a real time processing where data has been generated and you are pulling that data for the purpose of the process immediately you are pulling that data so maybe logs of the server maybe data sent by ioc devices maybe data sent through the clicks on the website you know this data which has been accumulated in last 10 minutes can form uh, data uh, suitable for stream analytics last 10 minutes the data accumulated in last 10 minutes is of the small size so stream analytics works on small size data but batch analytics works on very large size data latency of batch analytics is in hours and latency of stream analytics is in seconds so we have to have very fast processing or compute environment here although this compute environment works on small size of data that is called as a stream analytics stream analytics job is a special service available on azure which can quickly do the processing of this data that is one thing second important thing is stream analytics is available in other tools also stream analytics is available on hd insight it is available on databricks it is available on synapse analytics also wherever there is a spark you will see stream analytics is available there is another tool open source tool which also can do a spring analysis and it is storm storm apache storm it is again apache product one more tool which can do a stream analytics is apache flink so in addition to apache spark apache storm and apache flink also can do stream analytics and there are differences obviously i just do not want to go into those the differences one few important points i would like to bring to your notice either on spark or on storm or on flink you have to write the program to do see stream analytics in python or scala like language but here in stream analytic job they have given you doing this analytics by writing sql like queries but they don't call that syntax as sql they call it is a usq usql so usql is a uh, sql okay meant to write query excuse me hello ha ha oh ho oh, oh. ho session shuru hai oh ho oh. Uh, just a minute huh? just give me half a minute not more than that just a minute yes that's all 
So stream analytics also can do a quick uh, analytical processing. It is serverless service. So whenever it has to do analytical processing, it pulls the, so the servers from the pool, utilizes them, and send those servers back to the pool. So it is again a serverless service. Okay, but mainly it is dedicated for stream processing. Okay. Other services, data factory in Synapse Analytics, we know it with the name data pipeline. HD inside, it is a Hadoop cluster, pure Hadoop cluster, uh, uh, running uh, some service at the top of it. Some service like Storm running at the top of it, Kafka running at the top of it, or Spark running at the top of it. Okay, so that is Hadoop cluster. Okay. Uh, Data lake analytics, it is for batch processing. For batch processing, again, internally it uses USQL to do batch processing. So, as you are introduced, data lake analytics for batch processing and stream analytics for stream processing, these are services dedicated for a specific scenario of either batch processing or stream. Analysis services. Analysis services. You did ask me about caching of the data. That caching can be done here in analysis services. Okay, and thereby uh, you can define, you, you can create a data model here. Okay, and it can cache the data, it can create a data model for you, and every, uh, such things are possible through analysis services. So these are some relevant services you may, we may need to do. Processing. Okay, AI and machine learning. Here also you can use Synapse Analytics because in Synapse Analytics on the Spark engine you can do machine learning. <clears throat> Cognitive services. In order to do image processing, identifying faces, images in a video, uh, NLP, natural language processing, uh, chatbot processing, you can use cognitive services. Anomaly detectors, computer vision, custom vision, all these are, you know, cognitive services available there. Cognitive search, all these are cognitive services available there. Bot services, UA makers. Yes, it's a long list. Okay, so multiple such services are available. As far as storages are concerned, there you can see Azure Data Lakes Gen 1. Okay, this is available. And storage account is available here. You don't see data like Gen 2 because now data like Gen 2 is not a separate service. Data like Gen 2 is a part of the storage account only. While creating a storage account, if you enable hierarchical namespace, you get a data, uh, data like Gen 2. Otherwise, it is block storage. Okay. Multiple such services are available here. Azure Databricks. A computer to Synapse Analytics. And uh, I normally receive the question, which one to use in which scenario? So that comparison, uh, I already have included in this slide, so that also we will see. Databricks versus Spark. There is always a confusion. What is Spark and what is Databricks? Both these terms, so Databricks cannot be separated from Spark, let me tell you. Because, you know, this uh, Databricks incorporation, first of all, they designed Spark engine. And what is the significance of the Spark engine? That it is a big data processing like Hadoop, except the fact that Hadoop uses hard disk extensively and Spark uses RAM extensively. Again, Spark and Hadoop. You know, both of them use the distributed storage and uh, both of them use something like MapReduce. But what is the difference? That Hadoop uses disk extensively and Spark uses RAM extensively. Accommodating big data into RAM is a very serious challenge, very great challenge. And that has been made possible by Spark. It accommodates big data into RAM and thereby it processes that big data you know, without interacting with the disk much, but with the interacting and keeping that data all the time in 
ran. That's why it's a latency, where latency of the Hadoop is, uh, you know, in hours and days. Latency of the spark is in seconds and minutes. That is a big difference. Databricks workflows, production jobs at Databricks runtime, Databricks IO, Databricks serverless, Databricks enterprises. Lots of features are there in the Databricks. So Databricks also is very competitive product. Okay, and you will see uh, that, uh, you know, Databricks uh, and Synapse Analytics, they are in competition of introducing you know, newer and newer features. When any new feature gets introduced in uh, Databricks, you know, uh, Synapse also tries to introduce that. And whenever any new feature is introduced in Synapse, Databricks also tries to introduce that. Databricks components. Okay, Databricks used to have its own server, its own cluster. It used to have its own cluster. Databricks is cloud service, and that cluster also exists on the cloud. Databricks is not an environment which you can create in the local machine or on premise. It always exists in the cloud. It also used to have its workspace to hold, you know, business data components. Okay, and what are all business data components? Notebook, which you may write in either Scala, Python, R, SQL. The interesting thing is, core developers can write a single program where first command is written in Scala by first developer, second command uh, command is written by uh, written in Python by second developer. So in one program. First command can be in Scala, second command can be in Python, third command can be in SQL, and fourth command can be in R. Why did they introduce so many languages? For the developers coming from the different background. And if they want to write these commands in single uh, code, that is also possible. That is the notebook. So these are different components. Data link store Gen2. What is the difference in block storage and data lake store Gen2? Block storage has a soft upper limit of 1000 GB. Data lake store Gen2 does not have upper limit. Theoretically, they say it is infinite storage. But infinite is not existing. So I will say it is a so humongous storage that a need of any project and any organization it can meet, a single data lake store can meet. Uh, what would be the large data size an organization has handling hundreds of gigabytes of throughputs? As I said, its read write speed is also faster compared to blob storage because in data lake store you have distributed storage because of it you get higher read write speed. Supports HDFS wrapper for data breaks, HD insight, synapse analytics. HDFS wrapper means. You know, uh, API through which you can uh, access HDFS or DBFS. So, uh, data lake store can be uh, used as a HDFS in Hadoop, okay, and it can be used as a DBFS in data lake store, uh, the DBFS in for Databricks or for uh, Synapse Analytics. Offers ACL, POSIX, like security arrangements, high performance because of uh, hierarchical storage, high performance for analytical workload for hierarchical storage, or big data workload for uh, hierarchical storage. Inherit Azure Blob Storage Replication Model with LRS and GRS and replicate it uh, beyond the region also. Okay, this is showing you flat namespace and uh, hierarchical namespace. This diagram is showing stream analytics. Okay, so different use cases, stock market trends, you know, where data uh, is very vibrantly changing. Okay, mechanical component of health monitoring data in automotive and automobile industries. Okay, it is an example of IoT devices. Okay, so IoT devices, satellite images, fraud detection, sentiment analysis on Twitter. There are many use cases here in stream analytics. In stream analytics, your data is first of all going into event hubs or IoT hubs. Okay, these event hubs and IoT hubs are directly connecting, uh, connected to 
data source. A data source can be uh, log of the servers, log of the machines. Data source can be data coming from IoT devices. So whenever that data is captured by Event Hub, you know, as per uh, the demand of the stream analytics, that data is uh, supplied to the stream analytics. Stream analytics will per perform analytics on the data and analyzed data, aggregated data can be sent to variable storage. It can be data warehouse or it can be Cosmos DB from where it can be varied also. So that's how you know, uh, stream analytics works. Directly from event hub, data can be captured or the data created may first of all go uh, and made static on the data lake store and from there, you know, stream analytics can capture the data. Both ways it is possible. In this case, your data uh, will go into the static storage before it is being processed. In earlier case, your data is directly being processed. Okay, it is not going into any static storage. So this is dynamic processing data without going into storage, directly being processed. That is dynamic processing. And this is static processing where first of all data is accumulated into ADLS and then it is processed. Okay, so multiple such uh, services available. Couple of more services would like to bring to your notice. Kafka, open source, freeware, distributed messaging system. Whenever your data is coming with very high velocity and your compute is not able to digest that data with the speed it is coming in, then you have to have some buffer where you can keep that data forever. This buffer must guarantee you that whenever it is preserving that data, irrespective of the velocity of the data, you know, it will not lose even a single bit of the data. So from many IoT devices, from many website pages, whenever a data it is accumulating, that data first of all goes into Kafka. Kafka has humongous storage, preserve the data, with the assurance that not even a single bit of the data will be lost in transit. And then from the Kafka, Spark and Storm can pick up the data and process it with their speed. So even if their speed is little less, the speed of processing is a little less, still it assures you that Kafka will preserve every bit of the data. That is Kafka. I told you about Storm also. Storm you know, stream processing engine. Okay, this is event based engine. Spark is micro batch based engine. So there are some, you know, if you go to deeper, you will see some differences over there. Okay, in which I, at this point of time, I just went to. Synapse analytics versus data bricks. So quickly go through this comparison. Databricks is not data warehouse. Synapse Analytics has data warehouse solutions in the form of SQL, sorry, serverless database or dedicated SQL. It has analytics compute in the form of Spark. It has graphics user interface for designing a data pipeline, ETL or ELT pipeline, okay, using Synapse pipeline. Okay, so it is actually a unified service where Many things are possible without you availing any other service. One stop solution. If you don't go with the Synapse Analytics, okay, but you want to use the services, other services, and multiple services of Azure. For creating a data warehouse, there is a separate service called as a dedicated SQL pool that you will have to use. For analytics, you will have to use data bricks. For designing this, Graphics user interface pipeline, you will have to use data factory. So if you don't decide to go with the Synapse Analytics, okay, you will have to deal with multiple services and that will make uh, overall you know, work a bit complex. On the other hand, Databricks is not a unified set of services or it is unified set of services in the different context. In Databricks, you can do data cleansing, 
data transformation. You can do ETL and uh, ETL work. Sorry, not ETL, ELT work. First of all, you will have to load the data and then transform the data. You can do machine learning. You can do critical analytics over here. You can do stream processing here. So Databricks is unified service in some another sense. But in the Databricks, you uh, uh, don't have a way to uh, do, uh, you don't have a data warehouse solution. You don't have data warehouse. Yes, one data warehouse solution you have, and it is in the form of the Hive. Hive services. So you do have data warehouse solution here. OK, which is in the form of the Hive. So that you can do here, but otherwise its unification is in the different context and its unification is in the different. Okay. Spark engine cluster integration. Make a storage primary needs to mount. OK, and here you simply have to declare that as a primary or secondary storage. You don't have to mount it. OK, whenever you are declaring any storage as a primary or secondary, it is a way to mount it. Okay, so that's how. You can do integration. CI/CD support is available in Databricks, but it is not fully available in Synapse Analytics. OK, so Synapse Analytics is yet to be completely evolved. So there may be some of the gaps which will be filled soon. But as of now, you know, it is yet to be completely evolved. So here CI/CD support is not fully available. The Lakehouse support is not fully available. OK, those, those supports are still fully available in Databricks. Developers experience that also you please have a look at quickly. Here you don't have H tap support, but here you have H tap support. So H tap gives you more performance specifically whenever you want to ingest the data from or major storages or ingest the data from OLTP workload. Here you don't have a step support. So here you have to bear a brunt of you know performance loss. Going ahead. If you compare with respect to pricing, I always have seen that Synapse Analytics pricing has been kept little low compared to Databricks because Azure definitely wants you know, to promote Synapse Analytics over Databricks. That's why you will see pricing differences. Okay, and as of now, pricing uh, of Synapse Analytics is little low. That data Market stake for small businesses. Here you will see Synapse Analytics has a larger stake than Databricks for small businesses. For mid-sized businesses, okay, there also you will see. Synapse Analytics has a larger stake compared to Databricks. Okay, so because of the simplicity, you know, that is happening. And lately, all small sized and mid uh, sized businesses, you know, are uh, uh, preferring to go on the cloud. And on the cloud, when they see cheaper service, definitely they prefer. But on enterprise uh, level, which adopted, uh, uh, you know, these analytics long back. They are, they did prefer that time. They did prefer Databricks because at that time, uh, Synapse Analytics was yet to evolve and yet to meet their requirements. So they did prefer uh, Databricks that time and still they are using the Databricks then. Their whole system is uh, running on the Databricks and they cannot, they are not calling it the legacy system. It is because you know Databricks is very particular in introducing newer and newer versions, newer and newer features. 
okay and thereby you know uh, all the vendors of the databricks are extremely satisfied with the level of the services with the uh, the quality of the services and that's why its stake is really high in the market that is again another level of comparison you can quickly go through it. but synapse analytics is fastly emerging earlier on databricks was the only player uh, in the market but synapse analytics is fastly fast very fastly emerging and providing uh, or proving a serious threat to databricks business differences in use case use cases in databricks you will see many services are not available as a gui and there you have to write program code so databricks basically you know is very much suitable for developers okay in synapse analytics many such things you can develop using jui that's why you know non developer or uh, uh, person from non development background also can design a services here okay that is one of the reasons why small and medium sized organizations are preparing it so development is fast in synapse analytics in which scenario which one to preserve, prefer for machine learning development here i am mentioning to prefer a databricks if it is a machine learning development okay and you want to have a choice in between synapse and databricks okay always prefer databricks for sql analytics and data warehousing always prefer synapse so use case wise what will be your preference that has been mentioned here so just have a quick look at that also reporting visualization prefer synapse because synapse and power bi can be you know very quickly seamlessly integrated with each other it doesn't mean that you cannot integrate data bricks and uh, power bi it is possible you to integrate data bricks and power bi okay but very quickly and very easily okay integration is possible in between synapse and power bi rather than data bricks and power bi real time transformation always prefer data bricks lots of libraries are available there uh, in pyspark because of which you get better performance i will bypass some of the slides which are these are architecture related in case if time permits sir we will go for them would like to know any question on whatever i have covered up till now we are about to uh, dash to the lunch time okay so i would like to hear couple of questions from you so let us suspend these remaining 4 minutes in q and a go ahead with your questions would like to take a quick feedback also see this is a one day session so in one day session i have to do fast forward but whatever i am trying to cover am i able to convey my thoughts to you yes or no please give me a feedback am i able to convey my thoughts to you Yes. Okay. I can see Priya Ranjan told me yes. Krishna uh, told me yes. Okay. Yes. Any other suggestion? If you have, don't hesitate to tell me. 
so that in the next session accordingly i will have to i will get an opportunity to align it many of you are saying yes but in case if somebody has any suggestion don't hesitate to tell me Anybody has any suggestion? Please go ahead. Krishna Ratnala, any suggestion? Priyanka? Uh, Priya Ranjan, go ahead. I, I have some uh, can, we, can we see some, you know, uh, sort of implementation or some, uh, you know, uh, the code for this implementation? Yeah, Just some of the part of serverless implementation I already have shown to you. In the post lunch session, we will try to create a implement a star schema uh, using dedicated SQL pool. And thereafter, in order to you know explore more on uh, Spark, we will try to you know create a data frame and work on the data frame. So post lunch, I am uh, reserving specifically for uh, more hands on because uh, you know that period is always difficult to stay awake. Uh -huh, yeah. Yeah, so we will do that. Here I just have taken, you know, tour to some of the prominent uh, services, Azure services, which we may have to deal with in uh, analytics. So not for every tool uh, I can uh, conduct uh, hands on. Because of, uh, you know, it is, this session is not meant for that. Normally, we conduct such sessions uh, for five days where, you know, thorough understanding of all the things we take. But in this session, anyway, you know, I want to prepare you for the exam examination. So what are all very important points regarding examination? That's what I am trying to cover here. Uh, Chandra, are we going to cover a brief about like something on uh, uh, Synapse pipeline? Uh, yeah. Or something. Yes, yes. I have uh, one lab uh, for that also. So that lab also I will try okay. to cover where we will try to use uh, ML flow. And uh, we'll design okay. one small pipeline. And uh, also in Synapse, do we have an option uh, similar like notebook, Jupyter notebook for some kind of integration for notebooks like we have in yes. uh, 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 database. Yes, yes, as uh, they are offering you Spark. So they are offering you development environment on the Spark. Okay. Development environment because on the Spark. Uh, on right now what we did was, yeah, right now the lab we did was more on like uh, running SQL queries, but can we do the same kind of workflow or run yes, yes. through notebooks? Yes, yes, yes. Notebook okay. creation is also there. And uh, not a Jupyter like, but similar to Jupyter, one Monaco uh, notebook they are offering to you. Monaco interface okay. they are offering to you for the purpose of the development. So that also we will try to work. Okay. So post uh, lunch, we will try to create a three uh, lab. So we will try to have three types of hands on. One on dedicated SQL pool, another is on. Uh, uh, Synapse pipeline and third is on Spark. Okay. Hello. Okay. Ah, fine. So it's uh, over to Chaitari. Uh, uh, Chaitari, are you there? Hello. Yes, sir. So over to you, Chaitari. Huh? I will uh, uh, mute myself and I will stop uh, sharing the screen. Oh, OK, sir. OK. OK, so before going on lunch break, I request all to check their mail IDs, the register mail IDs. I have shared the code with you all. Those who have submitted the responses on MOC activation form, I have shared the MOC code. So do read them and get access to that MOC. The uh, steps mentioned in the uh, mail body itself so you can follow the steps and redeem the code so you can get access to the moc that is study material for dp203 
also those who have yet to submit the moc activation form please do it fast so we can share the code with you meanwhile in break time i request all to share the moc activation form those who have yet to submit so we can share the code with you all thank you we will resume back by 2:30 thank you